In the wake of the tragic mass shooting at Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School in Parkland, Florida, schools throughout the nation are taking a closer look at security and considering many things that can be done to make them safer, right here in New England. Berkshire County Schools use multiple procedures and planning in an ever-evolving quest to keep schools safe. The Berkshire Eagles' Kristen Palpini joined me recently to discuss a series of reports by its journalists on the issue. Certainly school safety is something that a lot of newspapers, including the Eagle, are concerned about, but Parkland really, you know, reignited that, um, that need to write about it right away and do something. And so the way that the Eagle has looked at this, and a lot of the reporting is online if people want to go and check it out, is there were five questions that were put to the districts across Berkshire County's 23 cities and towns. And so I want us to tick through the questions and we'll just go from there. So what standard security measures are in place for schools in the district? That was one of the questions that was asked. Right. So in most of the districts, we found that, you know, they locked doors is really standard, getting buzzed in, everybody having IDs. Um, and then having a, um, a robocall system where they can get a, a words out right away. So parents very ha or guardians have a very strong sense of what might be going on if anything has gone wrong in the school. Correct, correct. And so the, when you look at this, do the schools in the district, do, do, let me try that again. Do schools in the district drill for emergencies, including active shooter scenarios? It's a scary thing. I mean, when we were in school, you had fire drills. Right. But do you know what's going on with active shooter scenarios in the Berkshires? Sure. So I do know a little bit about it. So I know that almost all schools train for active shooter. Um, even at the elementary school level? Even at the elementary school level. Um, I don't know, because I have a child in the elementary school, and, I, and she's been trained, and I know... You know, she's, she, and she told me, she's like, well, we're not supposed to really tell everybody what we do because we don't want the bad guys to know. But she's like, I hide in my cubby, is mm. what she told me when, when they do that drill. And so when, you're, when you have a daughter in elementary school, when your child comes home and, and they've said they've trained for something like this, are they scared? What do they, what do they feel? Right. So I think the schools are, are trying to be very careful about how they're training the kids and how they're talking to the kids on each you know, grade level. Um, you know, I spoke with uh, Peter Dillon, he's a superintendent up in the Berkshires, and he was saying there's a real, it's really hard to balance. You want preparedness, but you don't want to traumatize these kids either. Um, so, you know, what they do is they just try to make it normal, calm, just this is what you do, this, 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 very orderly. Very systematic. Yeah. You mentioned that the districts are using robocalls to communicate with parents, but when you're looking at how to get the word out, but also how to deal with the situation first, did districts talk with the paper at all about how they balance getting information out to parents and guardians in a timely way, but also dealing with the situation at hand first? Yeah, so, so right. So the, so the idea is to deal with the situation at hand first. Don't cause a panic that would, you know, have all the parents rush to the school and, and possibly, you know, be a bigger problem. Um, you know, assess, know what's going on, and then get the information out and, um, and be available for follow-up because there will be many follow-up questions. <laughs> and how is it that, another question that, that the paper looked at is, if parents and students want information about emergency preparedness in the district, is that information available to them? Because doesn't that get to your point about how much of this do we keep quiet? Right. But also, parents want to know, are you doing enough for my kid? Right. It's, it's a really hard balance. And what a lot of the schools suggest is having the parents get in touch with the principals directly so that they can have just you know a one-on-one -on -one kind of conversation. I'm not in love with that idea because I kind of, you know, I want my information right now and, and I want it always there and I want to be able to read it. Um, but I understand the need for, um, for some uh, security and privacy. Um, there are some schools, though, that, you know, uh, put it in their handbook and um, some of them can be very detailed. They talk about how the students should be cooperating with the emergency officials. If there's an emergency, they talk about um, you know, what routes they'll take to get to their safe, sp uh, safe spots, things like that. Because also, I could, if I'm a parent, which I'm not, but I do have uh, kids that I love, <laughs> you're, you're looking at this issue and you think, okay, here's what the schools are doing, X, Y, and Z. Oh, this I see as a potential gap, and that could be possibly uh, an opportunity for dialogue, I would think. Right, right. And so at that point, I get, it's on the parent, really, to, um, to contact the school. 
Um, but the schools are, I mean, they, they all are working on this. It's all federally state required, so they're all they're pretty on top of it. So you're one of the reporters who's been working on this. It's really been a team effort though, right? Yes. And Jen Smith also had a report where she looked at the fact that a couple of schools in the Berkshires are, are built, or a couple of places in the Berkshires are building new schools. And there's an opportunity, I would think, to deploy state-of-the-art technology to secure a school. Right. But on the other side, a lot of schools in the county are older, are aging, what are those schools doing? How do you make sure that you're updating when you're an older school? So, right, so that is a problem, um, uh, particularly in Massachusetts with the older schools. And what a lot of the schools are doing is they're, they're getting in touch with their local police and state police and having them come through and just say, you know, what do you see? Where are our weak spots? What should we do? What's your advice? And then, you know, the police are usually very cooperative with that. They'll go through, um, tell them what they need. And um, at that point, you know, the schools kind of have to go to the towns and, and, and ask for money. Um, but it's been pretty standard. Like, uh, even a lot of the old schools, you know, they'll have cameras. That's something that a lot of schools, no matter the age, have. Berkshire Art and Technology Charter School in Adams, as I understand it, um, they're a newer facility, not the newest in the Berkshires, but a newer facility. They're doing some innovative things, right? Can you they talk about are. that? Oh, yeah. They're, they're really cool. Um, they have their principal, uh, I believe her name is April West. She's very... Uh, up on making sure that the doors are locked. Um, you know, her uh, her belief is is that uh, you know a locked door, you're going to be safe behind that. Not a lot of people die in those situations. Um, so the school has uh, a couple of stop gaps, I guess. Uh, when you enter the school, there's a people catcher. You enter the first door, you're in a vestibule, and then there's another locked door that you have oh, to yeah, get you're through. Sort of sandwiching someone. People exactly. catcher. Exactly, people yeah. catcher. <laughs> and then they have, um, and then the person uh, in the administration office can hit one button and lock the main hallway to the whole school. So um, that would be a nice barrier as well. The Eagle's also been holding a series of community forums around this issue, right? Yeah. Uh, have you been hearing anything consistently across the board that's sort of coming to the surface? Sure. So our last one is tonight in Brattleboro. And what we're really hearing is people wanting that communication and wanting those assurances that their children are going to be okay and that the schools need to do more to have that information out there for the parents, readily accessible, but not in a way that puts all their cards on the table. Mm. So, so it's that's find, a challenge. Finding that balance. Yep. So as you mentioned, you're a parent. You have an elementary school uh, aged child. And there was a threat in Westfield this week. There was, yeah. And so something was written on a bathroom wall. And it was turned turn, deemed to be not a threat, actually. But as a parent, what is it like to, to receive that phone call that there's a potential bomb threat at the school? Oh, my. It, well, it's heart stopping. I mean, you, you know, my thoughts immediately went to uh, Sandy Hook when I got the robo call that there was uh, there had been a threat at the school. It had been evacuated. Um, you know, the, the call said that the police went through, the fire department went through, everything was fine. Kids went back in. Now they're home. But whew, I mean, that's a lot to take. So, you know, I called the school immediately back and left a message. They were very good. They got back to me in a couple hours. I'm sure they had tons of calls to make. And, um, you know, explained the situation as much as they could. I read later in the newspaper that somebody had wrote the word bomb on the wall, and that had been the threat. Um, but the school didn't release that information to me, which I kind of would have liked. Mm. The other thing that has come up in this past week is the fact that kids are threatening things on social media. Mm -hmm. Do Have the districts talked at all about how they deal with not only hard target threats at the actual school, but things coming in on social media? Right. <clears throat> so uh, they, so a lot of the schools are very aware of that and monitor, you know, different pages where there's a lot of student activity, and um, and if there is a threat, you know, just from from what I've covered in the various Western Mass regions, if there's a threat online, the school takes it just like it's a threat in the school or to the school. It's it's taken very seriously. Well, if people want to check out the reporting, it's BerkshireEagle.com where they can see your full coverage. Thanks so much for coming. Thank you. In.